Well, good morning, friends. Welcome to Well Versed. Beautiful day today. I invite you to sit back and uh, relax a little and uh, let's enjoy our time together. This is our last session in the first letter of John, and we're going to move on to some new things next week. But for now, let me pull it together. And I'm in 1 John chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 13 to verse 21 as a sort of potting shot here. So hear it as John wrote it. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. If you see any brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death, and I am not saying that you should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who has been born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true by being in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal love. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Just to there. And so friends, here's a thought, something to ponder for a moment. What might make someone afraid to ask another person for something? Have you ever been in a position where you're afraid to ask something of someone for whatever reason? Uh, and I, we don't need to get into the motivations, but I think we've all been in that place when we're afraid to ask questions. We'll leave it there for the moment. I'll put some flesh on this as we go along. So in verse 13, Here's the main reason John wrote the letter. So that we may know we have eternal life. If I can go back to the question a moment. Are we afraid to ask for eternal life? I don't know. But John writes that you may believe in God and by believing have life in his name. And ultimately, that's the Christian message. It's about life. It's about life in God and believing in him and allowing him to be part of our lives. Verses 14 and 15 say that if we ask anything that is in accordance with God's will, he will hear us and give us what we ask. Now, I don't know what your experience is of this, but that's a big verse, folks. If we ask anything, Anything that is in accordance with God's will, he will hear us and give us what we ask. Sure. Ponder that a moment and think of the implications for your life. Verse 16 is a huge verse. It says, if you see any brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death, and I'm not saying that you should pray about that. So that's how I read it. But this is a huge verse, because through our prayer for a sinning friend, that friend, brother, sister, will be spiritually cleansed and healed. Through our prayer for a sinning friend, that friend, brother, sister, will be spiritually cleansed and healed. Not only that... God will give them life. Have you ever stopped to think that our prayers for someone special in our lives, if we pray in the context of which we're speaking this morning, it will give them life? That we have the power to offer life to someone in terms of our prayer life? Life can mean physical life. It can mean physical healing Or life can mean spiritual life. Not necessarily physical, but spiritual. Or both. Who knows how God will answer and hear the prayers that we pray. 
So let's pray for both spiritual and physical healing for ourselves, for others, that we and they might receive both. Let's pray both for spiritual and physical healing. Now, in the first part of that verse 16, John talks about sin that does not lead to death. In the second part, he speaks about a sin that does lead to death. Now, here's the question. What is death? In biblical terms, in scriptural terms, in this context, it's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Scripture says that that's the unforgivable sin. Now, I don't want to get into that this morning because that's for another day. But Scripture is very clear that blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is not forgivable because we should know better and we do know better. What is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? It's a continuous and deliberate rejection of God, a continuous and deliberate rejection of Jesus Christ. It's a continuous and deliberate rejection of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a continuous and deliberate rejection of the Holy Spirit. Now, that's a mouthful. I know that. But you know what I'm saying. Knowingly continuing to sin without repentance leads to death. However you define that, spiritual death especially. Now, we all worry about committing the unforgivable sin. I, I can think of moments in my life when I thought, ooh, uh, let's think about that a bit. Because, you know, it sounds unforgivable. Think about this. If we are worried about it, then it's proof that we haven't committed the unforgivable sin. I hope that makes you feel better. If we worry about committing the unforgivable sin, if we are worried about it, then it's proof that we haven't. And please don't worry about it. Because, you know, really what we're talking about that is the exact opposite of, of death. We're talking about eternal life. We're talking about life in Christ. It's about joy and laughter and in the whole bit about doing life well. It's not about the negatives. Jesus didn't come for the negatives. He came to give us life. But the only thing I would want to say in the context of, of the unforgivable sins, let's not fall into the trap of judgment. Let's leave that to God, please. Let's not judge people uh, in the context of what they're saying and doing. Uh, we have enough problems getting our own lives together without trying to sort them out. So let's not judge. But if we're worried about committing the unforgivable sin, then we haven't committed it. And I hope that that sinks in. And then verse 17. Does not all sin lead to death? But when believers sin, their sins do not lead to death because God forgives and cleanses us from our sin. Therefore, for true Christians, sin does not lead to death. To death, because we understand that our sins are forgiven. The words of Jesus, my daughter, my son, your sins are forgiven. Not might be, could be, will be, are forgiven. We Christians understand this. And then when we get to verse 18, it's simply a, re a repeat of verse 17. But I want to say it again. When believers sin, their sins don't lead to death because God forgives and cleanses our sins. And if we have asked God to forgive us our sins, then our sins are forgiven. Then there, there's no need for this unforgivable sin thing because God simply says your sins are forgiven. He doesn't quantify or qualify, he simply says it. Now, if we've given our lives to Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. And I just want to close with this, and we can then put John to bed, if you like. In verse 20, 
Notice how many times in this letter John says, we know. We know. Verse 2, verse 15, verse 18, verse 19, verse 20. In other words, faith in Jesus Christ is true faith. Faith in the truth, Jesus is the truth. And we can know Jesus. I know that sounds a bit technical, but in other words, faith in Jesus is true faith. Because faith in the truth is faith in Jesus Christ. And if we know Jesus Christ, we know the truth. And the truth is, my daughter, my son, your sins are forgiven. The sting is in the last verse. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Or if you want to go to the commandments, thou shalt have no other God before me. And in a sense, anything that we hold up that is more important in our lives than God is an idol. Please, dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Friends, I hope you've enjoyed our little time with with 1 John. And I pray that this beautiful little letter uh, will, will have been a blessing for you. May I suggest one more time, read it again, the first letter of John, in the context of all we've done over the last few weeks. Just read it again, slowly and gently, without trying to study it. Just read it and let it sink in. Beautiful beautiful let's pray father god more than anything else you want life for us life in all its fullness jesus said it i have come that you may have life in all its fullness and so father every time we meet as we have done this morning we just get a little closer to you and we get a little closer to life as you want us to live it and we just Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your patience with us. Forgive us, Lord, when we stumble and when we stray. And just remind us that you're with us every step of the journey and that our sins are forgiven. And we are your children. With that in our hearts, we can just say thank you for our time together this morning. Bless us now as we go our separate ways, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful day, friends, and we'll get to something new next week.